evening. How are you? Welcome. I am Beth Thomas, proud principal here at Quince Orchard, and uh, out of respect for your time, and I feel like uh, I'm about to take a nap in a minute with the, the smooth jazz. But I definitely want to welcome you here this evening, and if you've not already, there's a QR code on the screen that will give you direct links to our presentation, and we will also uh, record a, uh, a follow-up from this and post it to our website tomorrow. So thank you for being here, and it's funny, I was just talking to Ms. Lee, one of our assistant principals, the last time we've done an in-person meeting for 10th through 12th, for rising 10th through 12th, was in 2019. Everything else has been hyper or virtual, so it's nice. It doesn't matter how intimate and how small we are, the fact to have you here and, and be able to engage in a conversation is important. So, I'm, I'm Beth Thomas, principal, and I'm excited to welcome you here this evening. I'm gonna go over a few things, and uh, the information that we'll share this evening will hopefully give you information to have a conversation with your student about registration for 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. So for many of you, this, well, let me ask, actually, let me ask, how many of you are uh, seasoned high school parents, or parents or caregivers? Okay, so for some of you, you're not. So actually, this may be your second meeting here this evening. I'm sorry, this year, not this evening. Uh, this year, as you're thinking about courses for your students. And so you're gonna see some changes this evening. You're gonna see some upgrades that we've made to course offerings. And you're gonna hear from our counselors and multiple people, or our, I'm sorry, lead counselor about registration. So, if you would just take a moment, so we're going to share graduation requirements, the registration process, because we're going to start registration in about a week, as well as information that's important for you and for your student to know as they're thinking about courses, and some of our AP and Advanced Signature programs, AP courses and AP and Signature programs. And then, of course, have time for questions. So this year we started off with a cluster kickoff. So if you've lived in the cluster, you may know many of my colleagues. Uh, we are excited to partner every single day with Ridgeview, Lakelands, Jones Lane, Fields Road, Rachel Carson, Thurgood Marshall, and Brown Station. And so we had a cluster kickoff actually in the same auditorium. And it really was to symbolically and uh, not only symbolically, but to clearly articulate that our number one um, focus is to create the conditions for students to have, to engage in learning experiences that are anti-bias and anti-racist. And so we don't waver from that commitment, and I think it's powerful when you have a cluster come together to signal that we are going to hold each other accountable from K through 12. In our counseling team, so if you've not already, if you're a current, uh, obviously, parent or caregiver, you're probably you're here this evening, and your counselor for your student is a really critical piece in the registration and uh, articulation process. They are the advocate, they are the voice for your student along with you, along with teachers, to ensure that your students have what they need to graduate on time. That is our number one goal, is that they not only connect with Quince Orchard, they feel a sense of uh, pride, they find things that interest them, and they are prepared and ready to go wherever they want to go to be college, career, and community ready by the time they graduate. So, <clears throat> inevitably, every single, well, I wouldn't say every single year, but pretty much actually every year, since I've been here, we've had a change in counseling. And our number one commitment is to ensure that our rising juniors into their senior year stay with the same counselor as much as possible. So you may see some shifts and some differences in students' counselors, counselor assignments, nine through 10, I'm sorry, nine through 11, and then in 12th grade, it, it may change a little. So it may seem a little odd when you look at the screen because of our amazing counseling team, but they really try to stay if not all four years with your students, at least definitely junior to senior year. That is really important. 
And if there has to be a change, we go through student by student. So they are your point people. Uh, we have a counseling secretary who is available and on call every day from 7.30 to 3.30, and then our counselors are always available via email. Info as well. So graduation requirements, I have to say this, anybody in this room, it is so nice to be able to tell you that graduation requirements are the same. I haven't been able to say that. We haven't been able to say that in, what, four years? Because graduation requirements have changed. So every single year, there's going to change. For the class of 2025, you probably remember, we implemented a health credit, for, uh, health fee. For class of 2024, I think there was a change in science. So for the first time ever, these are the minimum requirements that your students must have to graduate. That they must have 22 credits in total, but they must have 18, which come from these specific areas. So there are the four English credits. Every single student, no matter what, junior, I'm sorry, freshman to senior year, must take an English class, no matter what. They must have uh, three courses, uh, three credits in social studies. Many of our students take multiple social studies credits because of the plethora of courses that we offer. Uh, three in science, and that's biology, um, chemistry, and physics. Again, many of our students take multiple. We have some students who take uh, biology, chemistry, physics, and then they may take AP biology, AP chemistry, whatever their path determines, we have it available. And in math, they must have four years in high school. So we have students who will come into Points Orchard. We have some students who will come into Algebra 2. They come in as a freshman in Algebra 2. So then they'll take Geometry. I'm sorry, they've already taken Geometry. They'll take Algebra 2, and then they determine the next three years. Where, you know, they're very transparent here, where we um, are seeing a shift is in some different AP courses that you're gonna hear about, such as AP Pre-Calc. This will be the first year that we're gonna offer for your current students AP Pre-Calc. Multivariable is a course that we typically do not run at full uh, capacity because we only have a few students. So I wanna be very clear that when it comes to math and sciences, many of our students take those in tandem and because of the prerequisites, it's important that you have a conversation regarding the pathway as it goes into four. But again, it must be four years. Every single year, you must take a math course. Can you just, do you mind? If you write it down, don't forget, please. Um, also, one full credit of PE, one full credit of health. As I said, class of 2025, you're the first. And then every class after that has to take one full credit of health. Fine arts is one, and technology is one. Again, many of our students come in. They come in from middle school. They bring in their world languages. They bring in um, different tech credits. They bring in different things. So we look at every student case by case, and our resource counselor and her team goes through to make sure that we're double-checking courses and transcripts. So graduation requirements. You, when I, when you uh, are able to access this, again, this will be direct links to what is needed and the different courses that are available. Again, same, same credit requirements, but different options. So it's important that you take a look at that. Your students will receive this information tomorrow. So understand that tonight is a preview for you. Your students will receive the same information tomorrow. So that way you have a couple days to have conversations with them about their registration. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to our brand new resource counselor, Ms. Jessica, Jessica Concha, I apologize, sorry. Um, and this, I uh, failed to mention earlier, she's first year here at Queens Orchard and not in the Nile Park. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over now to Ms. Concha and she's gonna go through some additional information. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so if you were listening, Ms. Thomas mentioned that um, you have 22 credits that you need in order to graduate. But if you were doing math, 
and you realize that you only had 18 that she showed you. So the question is, where did the other ones come from, right? So we have a requirement for all students to have a program of leader or a program of study. And it asks them to kind of focus on the other academics other than the core four, like we like to say. So the typical program of study that students will elect is the world language. And the reason a lot of students elect that one is because colleges require you to have a minimum of two years of a world language coming in. Um, with that, what I would like to point out is that a lot of schools now are asking for three or four years minimum, and they'd like to see them at the high school level. So if your student started learning world language at the middle school level, that's fantastic. However, a lot of the schools want to see them at the high school level. This is a trend that started out on the West Coast and has quickly moved east. Um, a lot of the colleges that we hear from when we meet with the reps here on campus is that, you know, it's showing that they're not only persevering through things that they may not want to do, but it opens up their opportunities because a lot of international business is being done in all the different branches of education now, and so they need to be able to access different languages. So the ones we offer here at QO are American Sign Language, Chinese, French, Latin, yes, Latin, Spanish, and then Spanish for Spanish speakers. And that course is reserved for students who are native in the language, and they need to learn their native language a little bit differently than someone learning it as a secondary language would. Another popular completer um, is the career program. We've got a ton of them throughout the county. If you pull up the countywide site, there's, I think, up to 43 of them now um, that are offered throughout the county and your students have access to. Um, here at QO, we have child development, Cisco, computer programming, game development, Justice Law and Society, Media Communications, Project Lead the Way, which is PLTW, and then the Edison Center, which is a high school that's attached down to the Wooten area, and up here we have Seneca and Gaithersburg. And those students actually leave our campus for some of the time during the day. They go there, they do their learning and their trade, and then they come back, okay? So if your student is interested in career or technology fields outside of the building, then we encourage them to apply for those programs and be accepted. And then lastly, we offer career development. We recognize that while we would like to believe that all of our students are lifelong learners, that it doesn't look necessarily the same way we think it should. So all of our students are learning in some capacity, but not necessarily in the classroom. And so their focus, their passion is outside of the classroom, either in a career where you can go right to a trade or they just start working. And so we wanna make sure that they have the ability to interview successfully, the ability to ask questions, be inquisitive, and so for that reason, we offer the career program um, where they can actually learn about those interview skills. They learn about, if I went to MC into this pathway, what career could I go into? Um, so we call that the CCRD program, or College and Career Research and Development. Um, there are four classes, essentially, that they have to take. One, preferably sophomore year, one junior year, and then they do a worksite-based learning where they actually get credit for going to work and earning money. So it's kind of a cool deal. Um, and that shortens their schedule here. So they're usually just here for the first four classes in the morning, okay? There's not just academics that they have to worry about, however. <laughs> we wanna make sure we have well-rounded citizens when we let them out into the real world, right? So like we said before, 22 credits are required to graduate. However, if you do the math, seven times four is 28. So there is definitely some wiggle room for students who may not transition easily and have hiccups. It happens all the time. For students who think they know their passion and then flip the script and go 180 the other way. So the student's gonna be you know, a surgeon and then they say, just kidding, I'm gonna be a journalist. They have room to make those changes, okay? And we allow for that and we encourage it. All students must earn 75 SSL hours before graduation. Yes, 75. You know they will not walk if they don't have 75. I used to be an SSL coordinator at a former high school here in MCPS and we pulled students out of lines for missing 30 minutes. Sucks. So we really wanna make sure that they have those done. Now, that being said, they are built into a lot of the courses that they are taking. They can enter high school now, our rising freshmen can enter now with 45 hours already done. So that's a lot. Then they get here and they can earn another 15 to 20, just by sitting in a classroom, okay? So really we're not asking them to do a whole lot outside. So we wanna make sure that you are all aware. You can easily find that on your parent view app. So we can walk through that through question and answer session if you would like. If students earn 240 hours or more, then we would like to recognize them for participating in their community, helping better their community. Colleges are starting to ask for this information. Since the pandemic, colleges want to see how students are interacting in their community because they're gonna translate that onto college campuses. 
So it's a huge thing now. It hasn't been that way. Um, there are scholarships tied to having high numbers of SSL hours. I, in the past, have had a student who earned 1,200 SSL hours by being an educator. So he would go down to his middle and elementary schools every day after school. He is now working just under the CEO of Coca-Cola. They funded his college. They full ride it. So there are a lot of opportunities. You just have to know where to look for them. So I definitely encourage your students to be participating actively, positively in their community. Last one. <clears throat> State testing. So this is one that changes every year. So I'm going to tell you something and then it's going to be changed. So you have to pass four state exams, Algebra 1, English 10, NSL, which is National State and Local Government, and then Science. So that all change next year because it's all going to be different. But they are basically attached to one of the four four classes. Okay. And the goal is to make sure that we are not failing our students. We want to make sure that we are teaching them what we say we are teaching and that they are going out to the next level of whatever their life looks like and they are able to be successful in those four areas, okay? So we have a partnership with MC. Um, it's called Jumpstart or Early College. Um, it's now being changed to Middle Virtual Academy, which is very confusing, so I just stick to Jumpstart. <laughs> Basically, what it allows you to do is have your student take a class over at MC called Dual Enrollment, and then get credit there and here. Okay, so it'll only show up on their transcript here once, but they will then have college credit. This is not a program for everyone. This is a program for students who know what they wanna do, they have a passion and a purpose already, and they are dedicated to their own education. They might get bored in the classroom. Even AP might be boring to them. They wanna go deeper, they wanna ask more questions. Those are the students we recommend, okay? We are offering classes here at QO with MC professors adjuncting and coming over. Um, this semester we ran one class, next semester we're running two, next year we're planning on running five. So we are going off of what student interest is. So that is an option for your students. For the dual enrollment program, they can start as early as sophomore year. Again, really got to be dedicated. But they are able to take classes there, get support through their, their staff here and their friends and their counselors here, and still go to MC. Okay? And then early college is a big deal. Early college is you are leaving high school completely, you're taking all of your courses over at MC, you are graduating with an associate's degree and a college degree. So a lot of our students are then going to their four-year schools and spending roughly a year and a half in their L. And all of this is free. That's the kicker, okay? We're working on transportation so that if your student gets dropped off here in the morning, they have a ride there and back to whichever campus they go to. So definitely talk to your students about this if it sounds interesting to you. We can answer questions if you need them. All right, I'm gonna give it to Ms. Adams briefly for internships and apprenticeships. Uh, good evening. So I am the resource teacher for the Fine Arts and Career Tech Facts Department, and internships and apprenticeships falls under that. So in addition to the CCRD option, if students take that path as a completer, for students who don't take that path, but then their senior year, they decide, I, I only need my English credit, my math credit, and then I want to go get some real-world experience doing something that I hope to do as a career, they can sign up for an off-site internship. And that can be one period, two periods, or three periods. Most students do two or three periods um, of the day. They are responsible somewhat for trying to find their own internships. We do have some opportunities that we are aware of, but I would say about 50% of our students find their own internships, and there's so many local um, uh, businesses and organizations that are looking for internships. They can either be paid or unpaid. It's totally up to the company that they are working with. Um, to get more information, you can contact Mr. Sargent about that, and he'll walk you through that process. We do have some students who do it for the entire year. We have some students who do it just for their second semester. Um, but they would schedule their full seven classes until that internship gets fully approved through the application process. And then um, a big push, kind of a new, newer push, is what's called an apprenticeship. And this is a step above an internship. Um, it's with a more vetted company or organization. It has to be paid, and it requires more hours. It actually requires 450 hours that they complete. This is open to juniors and seniors who really have a passion in an area, and the state of Maryland and MCPS vet the groups and organizations and companies that have a part, apprenticeship partnerships with the school system or with the state of Maryland. So this is another opportunity for students who really want to look at getting certified in an area or getting um, so that they walk out with certain credentials and such. 
And again, they would also register for a full year because until that full process is completed and approved, they need to have seven classes. So if you're interested in that as well, um, there is, like we said, a more limited number of opportunities with the apprenticeships because of the um, accreditation that has to go on between NCGIF and that organization. Like right on the side, you have a staff member question. I got you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to tell you what I tell my students, and I'm going to say that was a lot. And we just slammed you in the face with it, and I do not expect to any of you to remember all of that, okay? Especially those of you who are going through this for the first time. What I want to do quickly is just kind of break down what your students will be getting tomorrow so you know what to hear about or what to ask about tomorrow when you see them when they come home. Okay, so tomorrow we're having an extended homeroom, which means they're sitting in their homeroom for a little bit longer than normal class period. And the main thing that they're going to be exposed to other than getting their corrected transcripts, so for those that come home, is the process of what they're going to do to register. Okay, and it's very detailed. It's got step-by-step -step with links to all the things. So all the information they will need to register accurately will be given to them tomorrow. The main thing we need to, to help them with and ask questions if need be is to read their transcript, fill out their four-year plan, which helps them determine what the next best course for them would be based off of their ability and their desires, and then have them submit that Google form. We are doing registration through a Google form this year. It is grade specific, so 10th graders will open the 10th grade or the 11th grade form because they'll be 11th graders next year. Ninth graders will open the 10th grade form because next year we the 10th graders and they will register for the courses. It walks them through step by step. Ask them for the English, it gives them their only options. Ask them for math, it gives them their options. Walks them through the whole way through. At the very end, they are asked to double check their requests, to make sure they share it with their families and caregivers, and to sign their names, stating that they understand these are not their classes set in stone for next year. You're just telling us what you want us to try to make work tomorrow or next year. Once we get all of that done, now it's on us, the scheduling team, to try to make all of those students fit into all the classes they requested. That takes time. It takes a couple of weeks to a couple of months. But it all is, it's all dependent upon them being able to accurately tell us what they want, okay? Once all of that is done, the form will be open. It's open right now for your students to look at. We are asking them to try to have all the selections done by the 17th. I realize that's a quick turnaround, but it's because on the 18th, we're going to start meeting with your students they will come down with their English teachers and they're going to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with their counselors. What that looks like is they come in, the counselor pulls up the request that they submitted, they pull up their transcript, and then they have a conversation with your student. So if they're choosing AP Pre-Calculus, but this year they only took Algebra 1, we're going to talk about what the math progression looks like and what the next best step is for them, not AP Pre-Calculus. When they leave there, we will have a better understanding of what they want. And then at the end of every day, as counselors, we will go in and we will upload all the requests that were made. So that we have an accurate understanding of what courses are needed next year for our students. So that we know how to set them. Okay, again, that was a lot. Don't expect you to remember any of it. All right, as promised, I believe the next thing is questions. I'm just kidding. I did all that. My bad. Yeah. All right. So, like I said, they have to have, like everyone said, they have to have seven classes. They will ask, they ask for at least two or three electives that are alternates. Meaning they really want basketball, but I don't know what's for basketball. Not everybody really gives basketball. So give us another option. So we have something else to filter them through. They must complete their grade level registration form. It's pretty clear on the slides, like four or five times. Okay? Before submitting, try to get a glance over on it. We know that's not always going to happen, but we're asking you to be an interactive conversation between you and your student. And then if you need help, all counselors are available before school, after school, and during lunch for registration discussions only. You may not have be coming out of class and having a conversation with us about this because of your students first. And you need to focus on this year's class. We're available all other times. All right, so I wanted to take a minute. I was neglectful in introducing our admin team. So we have an amazing, look, they're all standing up now. So we have an amazing administrative team. Not only do our counselors work together to support your students. So it's myself, um, the, I'm Beth Thomas, principal, if I have not uh, said that 85 times. And uh, the freshman class is split up by Miss Edith Lee and Miss Ashley Ashman. Now tonight's Miss Ashman, today is Miss Ashman's birthday. So uh, we said she could probably go celebrate her birthday. 
And then the sophomores are split up by Ms. Kirsten Jackson in the back, as well as Ms. Uh, Ashman. So they split. So between ninth and 10th grade, you may be contacted at any, at any point between Ms. Lee, Ms. Ashman, and uh, Ms. Jackson. In 11th grade, we have Ms. Everhart Bliss, and she is the 11th grade administrator, administrator so she will rotate up with 12th. And as I failed to mention, each admin so for example, Ms. Jackson will rotate up with up, uh, to the 11th grade, and then that's how we move it forward. And then Mr. Yarbrough is our current uh, senior class administrator, and he will always remind us, class 2024, the one that you adore, the one that they all been waiting for. They've been waiting for. So um, we, we do take a lot of pride in helping our students to ensure that they have supports and people to connect with here at Quince Orchard. So I know we've, we've said a lot, but I think it might be a good time for any questions, or do you want to go? So we're going to open up the floor for any questions. Mr. Yarbrough has an extra mic, and he will come on down. Ms. Domer uh, down here is capturing questions, so that way we can post these for any of your uh, neighbors, friends, and possibly if you have additional follow-up. Hi. Um, my question is, when do the students get the recommendations from their current teachers, and um, will they be getting those for every class? Or, oh, sorry, every uh, required subject area. Great question. So we have, uh, how do I say this? Uh, and then what, I'm looking for So we have created a process where students self-select their courses and teachers verify. What we've noticed is that when teachers recommend, uh, and I mean, our teachers are amazing, let me not um, throw shade, but sometimes when they recommend, a student may be interested in something different, and it may inhibit them from trying something or going a different pathway. So our teachers um, will make a, uh, what is the word? Advisement, thank you. Uh, make advisements, but students will not see that before they register for courses. So students will, um, go and meet with the counselor, they'll register for what they believe is the next course, and as Ms. Comptor said earlier, there, there's a list of courses based on their transcript, and students will hear from the counselor to say, you know what, you were in Algebra 2, I don't think dr dropping, uh, you're jumping to AP, uh, Calc AB is, is a great idea. So it's really to open up and give opportunities. Um, in instances where there might be different levels, like um, grade level honors, AP, um, the student, of course, is going to think AP, you know, is where they're <laughs> But um, would the teacher be able to have input in, in the Absol level? Absolutely. 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 And what we have noticed is that many of our students, for whatever reason, have this idea of what AP is and may not select an AP course. And we like to give them the opportunity with supports to engage in, uh, you know, upper level regular sports. So that's, it is, it is really a big part of the conversation that teachers, counselors, and students will have. What are the benefits or differences between taking an AP class versus a dual enrollment class? And if you want to register for dual enrollment, is that part of what's happening in this this week as they select their courses? <clears throat> so I'm going to give you my uh, feedback as a parent, as a principal. So it's hard for me to take hats uh, hats off. So they will register for the next sequence in their course. So for example. If they are interested in AP Lit, they will register for AP Lit. Say your student is a senior and decides, you know what, AP Lit's not my thing. I want to take my English credit at NC. There's, all, there's a process where they have to apply to NC. And let me clarify, NC is Montgomery College. We keep throwing around these acronyms, but Montgomery College is what we're talking about. And so students will have to apply and then decide if they want to take that course. It really is, in my opinion, as a parent, as a principal, based on your child's next, you know, their, their pathway. If, again, AP Lit is not their thing, they could take English 12. That's fantastic. They could take, for example, if um, they know they want to go into a different pathway and the sciences is not their thing, 
maybe they take a, a course at MC instead of taking a science here. We want our students here, and I want to clarify. I, I don't want the message to be that we don't want students here. We want students to have the best experience they can. If they're early college, they're dual enrollment, they still have access to everything we have to offer. So if they're early college, they can still participate in clubs, they can still participate in athletics, marching band, theater, all of those things, and take a, a courses that I'm seeing. So it's really based on your student and where they see their pathway going. It's very rare that students will take a dual enrollment course and not complete it. Most, most students, because they've had that, that uh, conversation, would take a course at MC and they, they stay the course, no pun intended. I don't, did I answer your question? I, I can't, so the hard part is like, I can't give specifics because every single one of your children have different experiences. Is this something that a parent can meet with the counselor to explore more? Because I don't really feel like I have the question answered. Yes, absolutely. And I, I, okay. Thank you. I really can't uh, stress enough how um, individualized it is because your student may take one course at MC, they may take two courses at MC. Uh, yes, my question is about internships for senior year. Is that application process happen again if she only wants to do it her second semester, or does that happen before the senior year starts? That's my first question. My second is, can they do two different sites for two different semesters? And my third follow-up on oh, that. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. Just hold yeah. on. Yeah. Hold on. Let, let, no, no, I'm just, I'm just joking. Hold on. Please. I I know her. Yeah, and so I'm, not that I don't know you all, but let, let me get to the first and second, and then we'll get to the third. Okay? Just hold the mic. It's a big build-up. So they would apply for they apply for each semester. So even if a kid has an internship their first semester and they want to continue a second semester, they like reapply and say, I'm staying in my internship. Okay. So we have had students who like start an internship and they're like, Yeah, they really that wasn't really what I liked. Okay. You have to finish out that semester or you won't get the credit for it, obviously. And then and they do earn credit. So if it's a three period internship, they're earning three credits worth of letter grade, you know, as part of their credit for out of the twenty eight credits. They can switch. We don't have a lot of students who switch, but if something comes up and they want to explore a different opportunity or with a different organization, they can switch in the semesters. Again, they're going to register for seven courses because the application process has to be finalized. The business has to sign off on it. They may have an agreement with the, the for an internship, you know, in June, and something happens at the company, and come September, they're not able to honor that anymore. So they're going to register for seven courses. They'll get the application. They'll complete it. We'll follow up with them, you know, mid to late August to verify that the internship is still good and valid for that semester. And then they'll fill out the, you know, like, we'll, they'll talk to the counselors, they'll get their schedules changed. Okay. And then they'll, you know, Mr. Sargent will be in touch with all of the rest of that process. Okay, and then that happens again for the second semester? Yeah, if they're continuing, it's it's a really easy, okay. like, transition. But they would be scheduled for seven courses, because we've also had students who realized, I didn't like that opportunity, and I want to go back in the classroom, or I'm going to go dual enrollment or do something different second semester. My last thing, sorry, is um, I've heard a lot about people's internships in the community, and I'm just curious if there's requirements here for like what they've actually done or recommendations. So how senior, do you follow up yes, on what so actually the happens class, there? The senior class is so amazing. I yes, they are. are. They so. are. Um, and it's interesting because by the time they get to second semester senior year, it's like, oh, I have an internship, and I, you know, I've earned all my credits, and never mind, they're graduate, they're done. Because most of them, their pathways to chart. They've been accepted, they know they're going to co uh, uh, in the career, they're going to our courses. And so their second semester becomes uh, interesting in that all of a sudden their internship isn't working out. And so we have to have follow up, follow -up conversations about the importance of if you need the credit, you must stay at that internship. If you want to earn the CCRD requirement, you must stay in that internship. But it is all case by case basis because again, our seniors by their second semester senior year are pretty much, they, they've earned all the credits that they need. They've been accepted, they're, in their mind, they are already done. 
So uh, it is, it's checks and balances for all of us. And can I just, can I clarify your question real quick? It, it just dawned on me. Your student must register for seven courses, no matter what. If they decide to do a dual enrollment, that is later. Yes. No. Sure. College question and to the mom up there asking about the enrollment. We just went through for my son, so if you have any questions, I can help you. But the application process has already occurred. But my question is and it, it's still a card, it's not that it's closed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, in terms of early college, I think you kind of answered my question. So, my son will still need to register for classes. He doesn't know if he's gotten into it per se, but what will be the next step? And I am curious about also if there is potential um, busing to Montgomery College. <clears throat> so the, they always need to register for seven courses because you want to have a placeholder. And for some reason, you're not accepted and or you down the road, you think, you know what? I, I thought I wanted to do this this point in my, you know, in the school year. I really don't. Okay. So always register for seven courses so there's a placeholder, number one. Number two is uh, MCPS has made a commitment to free transportation. For us, the issue is that the bus picks up here in the morning, and a majority of our dual enrollment students take their courses in the afternoon. Because we offer, if you think about our juniors and seniors, if you have an internship, in terms of resources, we want our English, math, and Five courses to be offered in the morning, not in the afternoon. So it's that's where we just couldn't access that resource this year. I'm not saying that they'll be the same for next year, but they did. That was the time that they could pick up this year. Yes, Ms. Jackson. I just also wanted to clarify: Ride On is free for all Montgomery College um, students. So that's an option as well. All right, we have a few more things to share, so if that's a good pausing point, I'll turn it back over to Ms. Lee, and she'll walk us through. Sir, I know you had a question. Sir, didn't you have a question earlier? I did, okay. All right, so that's a lot of information that's being shared out. Again, these slides are gonna be available to you on the school website. We'll also create a recording for you that you can watch and play back if there are any questions that you have. If there are specific questions about a course, you can always email your counselor. The counselor assignments were on, was on the second or third slide of this slideshow. And you can also CC your grade level administrator. Again, I'm Ms. Lee, I'm the ninth grade administrator. Ms. Ashman takes the second part of the alphabet, so I take all ninth graders, last name A through Q. R through Z is Ms. Ashman. And Ms. Kristen Jackson, she takes all 10th graders, A through Q. R through Z is again Ms. Ashman. Then we have Ms. E.B., who is the 11th grade administrator, and any questions can go to her, Mr. Yarbrough will take any senior questions. So you can CC the administrator with the counselor if you need to. All of our students need to complete their Google form before they meet their counselor. And I know that was shared, but again, by this weekend, you should have those conversations with your children about what classes they might want to take next year, and they should be completing that Google form by Sunday evening. By next week on the 18th, that's when the one-to-one -one meetings with counselors start to take place. So again, you can make changes, but we really want to try to solidify the schedule for next year as much as possible. We do have students who sit in their courses in the fall and they're like, this class wasn't really what I wanted. So there is opportunities for movement, yet it's not set in stone, but we would like to have the majority of the students' schedules created by the start of the school year for next year. Uh, all of the students are going to be meeting their counselors through their English courses tomorrow when they get the registration information. There's actually going to be a schedule that's shared with them, so they'll know exactly when they meet their counselors. So again, if you have any questions, have a conversation with your child. Ask them about the information they receive during tomorrow's extended homeroom. Uh, for our ninth graders, Ms. Ashman and I realized that there were a lot of questions that they had. Our students didn't realize that one credit in English meant English 9A plus English 9B. It's a half credit for each semester. So we've been doing ninth grade town halls. We've been going to all of their biology classes and trying to make sure that they understand you need to pass all of these classes. There are seven classes fall semester, seven classes spring semester, and you need credits from both of those semesters. We've had students come in and they were like, well, I'm failing bio A now, but don't worry, I'll just pass it next semester. 
No, well, like you pass it, but you only get bio B credit. You never got that bio A credit. So you're gonna to have to retake that class in summer school, or you'll have to take it online, or you have to resit for the course, and they're shocked. Because in middle school, they just pass from sixth to seventh to eighth. And so understanding if you don't have that credit, you don't graduate. So we've been having those conversations in the bio classes, but again, this information tonight will help you have some more conversations with your children at home. So a scheduling timeline for all of you. So all of the registration is gonna happen where the students choose the courses that they want. Up until Sunday, they meet with their counselors. Counselors put it in synergy. By February, we have a tally of all the students. That's incoming eighth graders, so there'll be ninth graders next year. Our 10th, 11th, and 12th grader, all of those requests come in. We have tally, but that's how we determine in February the sections that we're gonna open next year. We get our staffing for the upcoming school year. We determine, determine, okay, how many teachers are we gonna have teaching these courses? All of those determinations are made February and March. And then we have to start building that schedule. By the time it's June, your student will receive a letter with all the selections that they've made. And they'll look at them and they're like, wait, did I choose that class? And they might not want that class anymore, but again, they get a letter and it identifies all the selections that they've had. Then you can have, again, another conversation. I know that Ms. Contra mentioned that counselors will be having one-on-one -on -one meetings again with students after the seniors graduate. And for any parents who have a senior who's graduating in 24, that date is May 31st. So once the seniors leave, the counselors will then spend several weeks meeting the current 9th, 10th, and 11th graders to make sure Okay, what you decided first semester is still what you want by the end of second semester, okay? And then during the summertime, that's when counselors are starting to look at all the different schedules and making sure everyone has the classes that they need. And then they're gonna send out another letter sometime during the summer as well as information via you know, Synergy. They're gonna send you know, a hard copy letter home. There'll be some information in the newsletter. So again, there's time in the summer. It's not set in stone, but they want you to have a good idea of what you have to have. So plans for success, in addition to just taking your classes at school, we really encourage our students to you know, do additional things and take advantage of the programs that are available at our school, okay? And so we want them to take an AP class, that's fantastic. Take a class, maybe like a theater class, something you haven't really thought of, but encourage them to take something different. We have a lot of different things going on at QO, and sometimes you just need a little bit of um, an open mind to take something different. So I'd like for you guys to know there's gonna be some more information shared about the AP and electives fair that's gonna come up, but there's a lot of different opportunities for them to you know, explore something that they've never even thought was interesting. Um, I always share that we actually had a graduate here many years ago, his name was Jared is it Bush, maybe is his last name, but he wrote Zootopia and he did all of these things where he won like all these awards. And he said when he was in high school, he came to Quince Orchard, he thought he was a math and science student. That's all the classes. His English teacher was like, you're a really talented writer. And he was like, maybe I am. And he explored that, and then he became a screenwriter and won all these awards. So high school is this opportunity, this time for you to explore all the different things that you might want to do outside of just the classroom. In order for your child to be eligible for sports, for the different club night things that are here, they need to have a 2.0. Freshmen this year, they're all eligible, no matter what their grades were. In middle school, they're eligible. Sometimes that changes, but as of this moment right now, you are eligible when you are a freshman. What they don't understand is your fourth quarter grades freshman year or your fourth quarter grades sophomore junior year, they determine if you're eligible to try out for a fall sport. So we have had students who, you know, they understand, okay, if I get an A third quarter, even if I fail the class, my semester grade is gonna be a C. An A and an E gets you a C in the course. So they're like, I passed the class, I get the credit, that's over a 2.0. However, if you have more than one E, you cannot try out. Okay? And so we've had students who come and they're like, but I had, you know, when you check my transcript, look, look, you can see I have a, you know, 2.5, I should be able to try out. But fortunately, if you have more than one E, you cannot try out. And it's dependent on your fourth quarter grades. So we really need to make sure that we message to our students, it determines what you're gonna be able to do in the fall. You can't even try out. So we've had seniors who couldn't play. We've had, you know, freshmen who play freshman year, wanna play sophomore year, and they can't because their grades aren't where they should be. And it's not because they can't do it, it's because they were like, oh, you know, I'm gonna play the system. I'm gonna be able to, you know, work it out and try to get the credit and just do enough. So please make sure you have those conversations with your children. You also need to make sure that you have your physical exam completed. And I think in middle school, it lasts for two years, but in high school, it's one calendar school year. So make sure you have your physicals completed. Um, if your students don't like sports, uh, 13 months, 
So if your students don't like sports, we have a lot of other things that are available. We have eSports, which is video game sports where teams play against each other in high schools. So that's something that's different. Um, we have MSB, which is our Minority Scholars Program, where our students do a lot of work throughout the county for equity. We also have opportunities for students to participate in student government. And let's see, we have you know, programs like the theater program, we have Latin dance. There are just so many amazing things that we have at Quinn's Orchard, and if we don't have it, please have your students come and see you know, a teacher or a staff member. We could create a club, we could create some type of activity or program as well here in-house. So again, high school is that wonderful time where you can explore all the different possibilities. So we actually went through questions before, so I'm gonna have to start continuing to the chat. Thank you. So along with being um, the resource teacher for the Fine Arts and Career Tech, Department, I'm also the AP Signature Coordinator. Um, these slides are available by themselves in English or Spanish and are on our website. Um, so I'm gonna go through the different programs like we talked about. Um, I do wanna let you know, um, colleges, you know, there's the stigma of I wanna take a lot of AP classes, but colleges like um, Ms. Conjure said are looking for more world languages. We're looking for a more well-rounded student. And a lot of these signature pathways allow students Kind of that extra downtime or that time inside of a passion that they really like that helps de-stress them, gives them a little bit of a mental health break from the rigor of very intense courses and allows them to express themselves or explore different opportunities that they may realize is something they want to do in their for their career path. So the AP Signature Program is our way of recognizing students who really find a passion and continue through that passion to a rigorous level their junior or senior year by taking an AP course. And as you can see, there are multiple different ways to participate in the program. Um, and I'm gonna go through each of those over the next few slides. Um, the first is any student who completes an AP course at any point in their four years earns um, a signature program certificate as long as they earn at least a B both semesters in that course. Students who complete more than one and reach five courses at the AP level can maintaining that B semester grade throughout all of these pathways and programs. Um, earns the Signature Distinguished Scholar Certificate. So you get one AP class, you pass that, you do well in it, you get one level, when you hit five, you become a Distinguished Scholar. We have many students who reach this Distinguished Scholar um, level, and they allow them to take really AP courses in a variety of different subject areas. It's not pigeonholed into one specific area. The rest of our Signature Pathways do have a focus in one specific area. So we have three in the advanced arts. The first is visual arts. All of these courses, uh, pathways, require students to take five courses at Quinn's Orchard um, to complete the pathway. And they all contain at least one required course that meets the graduation requirement. So they have to have an art credit. Here's the students to get an art. And they can, there's multiple different areas. We have digital art, we have studio art, we have photography, we have ceramics. And then we have two AP courses at the end that they would take. One is AP Art History, the other is AP Drawing, AP Studio Art, AP 3D Art or 2D Art, depending on their area of focus. So if it's ceramics, they would take 3D. If it's photography, they would take 2D. If it's you know drawing and painting, they would take Studio Art. So they take any three levels. They do have to reach at least advanced level in one of the, the areas. So they could take Photography 1 and then realize, I want to do Digital Art and Advanced Digital Art. They could take ceramics one and then say, yeah, ceramics isn't for me. I want to take photography one and photography two and then reach the AP level. They have to reach that second level in at least one of those areas and they complete those five courses. Next is music. We have a huge array of music classes available. We have a full pathway in orchestra. We have a full pathway in band. We have a full pathway in chorus. We also offer four levels of guitar and four levels of piano. So students can take any of those, kind of mix and match any of these courses, and then they take AP Music Theory their junior or senior year to round out the five courses that they take. We do offer another music class, music technology, that does not count towards this pathway because they're not learning um, the skills that they need for AP Music Theory to do well in you know, the design of the music and the playing of the music. Then we have our theater pathway, and there are two kind of distinct tracks within the theater pathway. One is the acting side of theater, and one is more of the stage and production and uh, directing side of theater. So they pick one of those two pathways, they start both with theater one, and then they kind of decide which way they want to go. 
Um, we have, this is one of our newer pathways, and we have a lot of students who are starting to complete this pathway. Then we have our advanced, um, our career technologies pathways. The first is our two computer science pathways. One is the programming pathway, and one is our Cisco networking pathway. The Cisco networking pathway, along with the courses, there are um, certifications that they can get, tests they can take at the, the different levels that allow them to be certified at different levels within Cisco Technologies. The um, programming pathway, um, they can also earn course credit at Montgomery College based on their grades in their courses in their classes here. I will point out that if you have a student that takes foundations of computer science in middle school, that does not count as one of their five courses. And this is just to con stay consistent with all of our pathways. What we encourage students who take foundations of computer science to do, it, if they take it in the middle school level, is that we do offer credit within the pathway for digital art, music technology, so they can get their art credit and count it towards the computer science pathway. Because if you're gonna get into programming and get into web development or designing things, having that art or that music background to create your own art and music within your programs, we realize is very key. Or they can take a course in interactive media, game design, trackway, pathway, um, intro to um, engineering design, so a little bit of engineering and programming, or cybersecurity essentials, looking at the cybersecurity way. So that has some intricacies if you have a student who takes foundations of CS in middle school. Then we have two different media and communications pathways. One, they both start with inter introduction to interactive media, and then they veer off into the game design and game development pathway or the video production pathway. Um, both are very strong programs with job teachers who are leaders in the county within those pathways. Um, and we're excited about continuing with those. And then we have a pathway in education. So students who have shown interest in being early childhood, so like preschool teachers. Um, so they, there's three level, three courses that they take here at QL, and then they do an internship or take a dual enrollment course at Montgomery College to complete that pathway. And when they are done, they can, if they complete the whole pathway with the CDA requirements, they can actually leave here as certified preschool teachers um, and really kind of get a job immediately working in a preschool. And then the AP course that they take with that is AP Psychology. So learning about you know, how we think and how we do things. We have an engineering pathway as well, Project Lead the Way. This is the only pathway that technically doesn't have an AP class, but that's because Project Lead the Way is its own national organization. All of these courses are actually college level courses. The first three courses, IED, POE, and DE, students can take the course as long as they maintain an 85 average over the four quarters, then they take an end of course assessment, similar to, but much easier than an AP exam at the end of the course, once they get their score on that, then they can apply to the Rochester Institute of Technology and actually earn credit from RIT. They don't have to pay in advance. It's a post, after you take the test and you know what score you would get, and then you get like a transcript from RIT for those courses. It's only the first three courses um, that offer that, that RIT offers that um, credit for. And they, after they've taken the first three courses, they could choose either environmental sustainability or aerospace engineering. Based on enrollment, um, unfortunately this, this year we weren't able to offer both, but we hope that enrollment will go up. Um, but they'll have the option for those two, and then they finish it with a capstone course, Engineering Design and Development, where they actually go through a whole engineering process and create their own solution to a problem and research it and everything. Again, if you have a student who's at Ridgeview who takes IED at Ridgeview, then they need to take uh, both Environmental Sustainability and Aerospace to complete those five courses. If we don't offer both, um, we do have another option, and I can talk to you about what that fifth course would be to kind of fill in for that um, class. Um, IED is also a tech credit, along with Foundations of Computer Science and AP Computer Science Principles, so those three courses you'll see a few different times in here um, because they carry the, the graduation technology credit requirements. Then we have two that fall in our social studies department. One is our just social studies pathway, and these are for students who really have that passion for everything in social studies. Um, they take AP NSL, AP World, and then pick two more courses within all of our other AP courses in that department, and then they finish with a capstone course called Quest, um, where they really kind of take all of the knowledge that they've learned, apply it to real-world scenarios, have in-depth conversations, um, and complete 
different capstone projects for that. And then we have Justice, Law, and Society. So there are three required courses in, in that pathway. They pick one of our other AP courses here at Prince Orchard, and then there's three options for their kind of like capstone process there. Um, they can do an internship, take a law course at Montgomery College, and there are specific courses that fit that requirement, or MCPS has a summer paralegal program. So many of these students um, either do the internship over the summer or the summer paralegal program, it kind of opens up their schedule a little bit more, um, or they can do the internship during the school year, kind of like an off-site internship. Planning for this is key though, if you want to complete one or more of those pathways, and we do have students who do that, um, so contact me, I'd be happy to help you kind of figure out how to fit it all in. Many students, if you're going to try and do more than one pathway, will have to take or do take health over the summer. So we'll take health A one summer and health B another summer to kind of really get it to fit in. But we have many students who do the Distinguished Scholar, which is pretty much any five APs, and one of the other pathways, so art, computer science, music, theater, and the like. Any AP question, signature pathway question? Yes. They all have five courses in some way, shape, or form. Um, this one, there's a selection. This one has four, and then AP psychology. There, there, there's some that have also options depending on when you start the pathway. So uh, theater, it's theater one, theater two, and then two in the middle, and then um, one of those, and then the AP 2D studio is a double period, so that's a, that kind of counts as five courses. Yep. Yeah. I, not that I know of at this time. Part of it is we would love to have more and more programs, but then finding enough students to take the programs to deal with our, you know, I can't, we can't really staff a class if only five or ten kids are signing up for it, unfortunately. The county won't let us as much as we want to. Any other questions? For your signature program, mm -hmm. does the timing of taking those AP classes matter? So if they took one already in the ninth grade, Yes. Yeah, so it does say for the, talking about the distinguished scholar one at the beginning. Uh, we do say that they should take one as a sophomore, but now that we have more and more that are open as freshmen and sophomore to freshmen and sophomores, we're, we're looking at adjusting them. So traditionally, I know that they've taken five, including in English and a math, there they'll reach that distinguished scholar level. Okay, perfect. And then, do you have a recommendation? So a lot of it has to do with the AP courses themselves. I would definitely look at the course load and have them talk. And all of our, you can contact any of our, our resource teachers. Like I will say, like I teach computer programming. AP Computer Science Principles, I will tell you, is the easiest AP course that we offer at this school. If you come to class and you do work in class, there's very little outside of class that you need to do just based on the structure of that course. It's computer science for non-computer science majors. So it's not heavy, but colleges are starting to require kids to take computer science course. This is College Board's, you know, version of that. Now, there's other courses that require a lot of outside of the class work and reading and writing and other things. So a lot of it has to do with you knowing your student and looking at the requirements of each course, um, talking to the teachers, talking to the resource teachers. Um, the AP Signature booklet, which is linked up there, does have it at all the way towards the bottom. If you could throw all those pictures again has a description of each AP course and kind of what the general, you know, time commitment is and like what the core, the level, the load is for each of those courses. But again, any of the research teachers would be happy to, you know, discuss that more or the counselors if, depending on the course as well. Any other AP signature? And again, feel free to email me if you have specific questions. Um, about any of the pathways or the courses within the pathways or how to fit it all in. All right, so we um, shared already, and again, Carson Jackson is a great administrator, 
um, about the elective fair that is going to be happening at the end of this week, 14th and 15th. Most of our departments will be able to talk with your students on the 15th, um, but we do have like science um, in, in the first day on that 14th. Now the good thing is you actually have access to a few of the highlights that your students will engage with um, on those next two days. So that tiny URL is a link that you can see some of the electives that we are going to share with your students at the end of this week. So the environment is going to be kind of like a poster, um, poster presentation, a table fair. They will be able to engage with students, they'll be able to engage with staff, learn about what interests them, and hopefully be inspired by something that they didn't yet know they were interested. Um, every elective, and I'm going to share with you a moment, a great resource that you can also hold with you to have a conversation with your student, um, because obviously we can tell you about it, um, but it's better heard by those that are entrenched in the work and especially heard by students. So as you're reviewing what you're learning today with your students as they go through the same learning tomorrow during their homeroom, as you peruse this presentation again, view the video, um, and then, as I'm going to share with you in, in a moment, the course bulletin website, you now have more uh, planning as far as where they could go over the next couple of days to engage with these electives. So we have initiated a new course bulletin website. This is a one-stop shop for all things course registration, course information, electives. It is translated bilingual. Um, everything you possibly need to know about QO courses is here. Um, so please utilize this as a hub of information for you. We've talked a lot, we've had given you a lot of information. You will find it on this website as well. So this is your go-to um, when you have a question, but we still want it to preempt you having a conversation with us, the uh, counselors, administration, whoever you need to, but this definitely is a great resource for you to utilize, bookmark, and refer to over the next few weeks. It lists every description of every course being offered, all your APs, all your electives within the core um, content areas. You also have the contact information for the courses in the department chair. Um, we also have that listed here as far as all of our resource teachers for our content areas. So feel free as you're perusing the website, you find that science or social studies or health PE elective and you want more information, you can reach directly out to these resource teachers in order to get that more information. But we definitely just want to encourage you, you know, take some time to digest what's on that website, our course bulletin website, because a lot of your questions can Counseling has many ways to make sure that you're aware of the information that they're going to give to students and the events. Um, they're on Twitter, at, um, Instagram, their handle there at QOHS Counseling. They also have an awesome web page. You click on the link, it'll take you to the web page um, that they have for the students. There's even sections for each of the classes, so they need to do class specific also but also the generalized information that counseling has for you and your students to engage. So that's another great bookmark for you to utilize um, as you're working through your, your course registration time here. So I know this has been a lot, it's been a long night. We appreciate you um, being here with us this evening. Here are all of uh, the administrative team's emails. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. You have the emails of counseling earlier in the presentation. You have the message the email for all the resource teachers and the content um, that will be able to answer all of your questions also. Again, we will have a recording of this uh, coming up soon. You'll have the, web, the uh, presentation on our website soon for you also. Your students engaging in those conversations tomorrow. There's a lot of great table talk over the next few days. Any last minute questions as we are concluding? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we hope you have a wonderful evening, a happy holiday, and we're always available if you have any questions.
Be well, be safe.